The first bakery uh, that I was involved with opened in 1972. We were all single moms at that point, and we all had been previously married to school teachers who were colleagues. We called it just The Bakery, and it was in the Grand Central Building. It was a popular destination. We were probably Starbucks' first commercial customer. To this day, people who remember way back then will say, oh, I remember those cinnamon rolls, and they were this big, you know. <laughs> I left in about 1976 and had a little over a decade of being on a farm in eastern Washington. I remarried and we took sheep and horses and kids and moved everything to Goldendale. And she cooked from the garden. She mostly cooked meat we had raised um, on the farm. And she was just like her generation, heavily influenced from, with Julia Child. She would take on some complicated Julia Child thing, but then somehow always made it a little bit easier and more accessible. I first became interested in European style breads after my introduction to Carol Field's book called The Italian Baker. Her drive and passion was just like on display at the farm with just, just the two of us there for, I remember, a couple months in there where we just had bread coming out of our ears and anybody that came over said, you know, you know a lot of it went to the chickens, you know. <laughs> but there was all this, you know, pre-ferments and biga and starters and just a lot, and the KitchenAid we almost destroyed. In the course of about three or four months, we remodeled the old bakery and bought a little, a small four-deck hearth oven from Italy. The word began to get out about the bread, and John Hinteberger, who was the long time and beloved food critic for the Seattle Times, wrote a great big article, Run, Don't Loaf, to the Grand Central Bakery. Well, from that point on, we had a line out the door. We moved to Marginal Way in about the second year to accommodate the additional wholesale production, and uh, Leslie Mackey was the head baker at the time, I came on as the as one of the graveyard bakers, and and um, it was just to get done. It was just very satisfying work, and it was something that I that I took to really naturally. We came with a good reputation from Seattle. You know, people um, knew of us. A lot, a lot of the grocery stores and the restaurant scene knew what was going on up there. And when we opened. In June of 93, I believe it was, at, on Hawthorne, it was a bit of a madhouse. We were, and, and the original plan, keep in mind, when we came to Portland was not have a retail. I was looking for just wholesale buildings in neighborhoods that, that employees could get to easily. The pastries were really busy and they realized, oh my God, we've got a cafe on our hands, not just a wholesale bread facility. And I worked at Multnomah for maybe a year and then we opened Irvington and um, which is now closed but that was the first place where we really integrated a full service sandwich line and really explored cuisine. We were lucky in attracting smart and ambitious people and unless you grow you can't really provide a lot of, of um, opportunity for for people. As we've grown I think that we actually sit it's almost a unique location for an organization that is our size with 10 cafes and two robust wholesale locations um, where the quality of the product and the sourcing of the product is better today than it ever has been up to this date in terms of across the board, the amount of food that we buy from really great producers, the amount of money that we're kicking back into the local food economy, and the number of customers that we're delighting on a daily basis. I meet someone for the first time and I say that I work for Grand Central or I'm part of the management team and there's just something that a click happens with a lot of people and I've over the years I've never really understood why you know and it's it's just I think it's trying to do the right thing when we can we've paid every bill on time here since we've been in so we've treated our vendors well we try to treat our employees well we try to pay what we can and just doing we've always done these things just naturally and now, in the last two or three years, you know, we've, we've tried to formalize this into the mission, vision, values that we've put together. That's the glue that's going to move the company forward into the future long after I'm gone. <laughs>